is going to do in your life this morning and give him the praise give him the worship oh yes lord we thank you father we bless you in jesus name amen amen oh give a clap offering unto the lord hallelujah oh, don't don't go don't go i want you to lead this mass choir because you can sing better than i do there's a song there's a song you taught me but i can't sing it yes. so you lead a mass choir be on your feet you're going to worship god hallelujah where you Come on, worship him this morning for solution. Come on, you can do better than that. Worship the Jehovah of Jehovah's. When you Worship him this morning for a great solution. When you The chorus again, the chorus again, the chorus again. Yes, when you yam Thank you so much, Reverend. God bless you. Give the Lord a shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Nothing beats the glory of God. Not in heaven, not here on earth. This song, in my worship time this morning, I saw the angels singing the song. The angels of God. They speak all languages. And the worship was so powerful, the healing, healings was taking place. I believe by faith even now you are being healed in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Good morning. Welcome to Prophetic Solution Center. I welcome you all by faith. And as I say every blessed Thursday it's your faith plus hope that will give you solution and not man. I welcome those watching us live. Those listening by audio. Those on their way coming because I know by faith they'll be here with us. Hallelujah. How are you this morning? Mm. Those of you who are dead here, lift your hands. So you are all alive. How are you this morning? Give the Lord a shout for being alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Although the prayer was short, but the topic was powerful. Amen. This is the last Thursday. In the year, uh, not in the year, November 2018. I'm in a rush to get to 2019. Because there's something good in there for all of us. Hallelujah. This song I made Reverend sing for us is to do with something I saw this morning. So awesome. Awesome. Take your seats. Take your seats. Hmm. It was a song that came up after we, we were being tormented. Some of us were in panic 
fleeing, running, helter skelter everywhere. People were trying to dodge something. And the person that was leading, I could not see the face of the person, but the person that was leading us, those of us who were in panic and fleeing, just stopped. And we all stopped. He says, praise God. Let's just worship God. And as we started worshiping God with this very song that we just went through it, as if I'm trying to demonstrate it, like there's somebody behind me almost touching my shoulder, almost. I mean, few millimeters from touching my shoulder. And when we broke out into the worship song, they started slipping back. You don't get what I'm saying. <laughs> People have been chasing you since you were born into that family, and they are still chasing you to this morning. What the Lord is saying is that from today, as I heard the word mercy, mercy will be shown, and they will not be chasing you anymore. People were chasing almost touching us. I'm talking about our enemies. But the worship song brought a difference between them and us. Worship God whenever you in die straight. Worship God when you don't have food to eat. Worship God when you can't sleep. Worship God when you are being tormented. You will see a gap drawn by God between you and the enemy. So I said, Lord, what does it all mean? And then he showed me in Psalm 73. New Living Translation, Psalm 73, 16 to 20. His praise will always stop the enemy. You see, you see, so I try to understand why the wicked prosper. But what a difficult task it is. You can never understand whilst you know the guy living next door to you is an arm robber. But he's driving all the flashy cars. Uh, he, he has lands and he even owns a hotel. But you are here 24-7 fasting. If even you go to a restaurant and you order food and you know it's only two portions of meat on it and they give you three, you take one back. You are that holy all your life. When people slap you, turn the other cheek. You've never stolen in your life. If, if you love the mate in a church rock cry, you pay double just to show your Christianity. But you are poorer than the word poor. Nothing is working for you. The devil is tossing you to and fro. He says, go back to 16. I try to understand what wicked prosper, but what a difficult task it is. Why are they prospering? Why is it that you who do not even curse from your mouth? The landlady is chasing you that this weekend move out. Why is it that your husband said, I'm going to do my MBA? I'll be back in three years, seven years now. He's changed his address. But he's still in the house of God, praying, giving offering. There's no understanding. But watch what I saw this morning. Go on. Then I went into the house of the Lord, the sanctuary. Then I went into, the, into your sanctuary, meaning the house of God. Oh God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. Say amen. It means never be envious, never be jealous about anybody that looks like prospering more than you do. Hmm? They may have gotten there first, but they'll be disqualified because they got there in the wrong method. Never envy anyone in your life. Whether it's their shoes or wig, I don't know. The car they drive, the food they eat, how they speak. Never envy anyone in your life. Truly, you put them on what? Slippery path. And send them sliding over the cliff to destruction. That is exactly what I saw. Those that were chasing us, when we broke into worship, they started going back. Sliding back to the pits of hell. 
where they came from. You understand what I'm saying? So definitely, yes, we'll be chased. But then, their end, God has designed it already. So don't panic. Don't be afraid of them. It says, in an instant. You know what the instant is? In the olden days, we had this uh, camera called Polaroid. Polaroid instant camera. Once they snap you, bam, it's in your hand. Hmm? Instant. Instant noodles. Even that is not instant. You still have to wait three minutes. This is instant. They are destroyed. So that means suddenly as your enemy thinks they've gotten hold of you, there'll be no more. The grave will not be deep enough to take them. What I'm trying to say is that this is the last stage of November. We're entering December by grace. No demon that has plagued you from the beginning of the year will enter December with us in Jesus' name. So you are free to praise him. You are free to worship him. You are free to eat the food you have earned to eat. Hallelujah. In an instant, they are destroyed. Completely swept away by terrors. 20. When you arise, O Lord, you will laugh at their silly ideas. As a person laughs at the dream in the morning. Silly ideas. You are here at Solution Center. They'll be at home. They're going to waste their time. Another Thursday, going to sit ah, sit ah. The blood of the Lamb is upon you. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. As you leave solution with mercy upon you, they will see why you go to church. So they will never touch you. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a shout and receive it. When God is with you, there is no defeat. In, in, my, in my look long, I've prayed, I've fasted, I've done this. I've, but when God is with you, do you, do you all know the, the tortoise? Hmm? The tortoise. Have you ever seen it running? Hmm? Today I'm bringing revelation knowledge to you. You were not born slow. And you are not slow. In everything you are even doing now. Whether somebody says you are 45, you haven't married you are 80, you haven't married, this and that. You are not slow. God's perfect timing is due you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genesis 6, 19 to 20. I want to show you something interesting today so that when it looks like somebody is telling you that you are too slow, you should have gone to some malam or something somewhere, Believe me, you are not slow at all. So bring a pair of every kind of animal, male and a female, into the boat with you to keep them alive during the flood. 20. Pairs of every kind of bed and every kind of animal and every kind of small animal that scurries along the ground, including what? The tortoise. Will come to you to be kept alive. Say amen. Now, when God said they should go into the ark, you've all, those of you who don't watch uh, the Animal Channel, National Geographic, when you see a cheetah, a lion, and all those things sprinting away, the jaguars, they are very, very fast. But the tortoise crawls along. But because God has already said they will be part of the ark, I hope you are getting this revelation. Because God has already destined their end from the beginning, there was no need for them to run. Because they were not born runners. So, Mr. and Mrs. Tortoise decided to go in their own pace because they knew within them that their space is not occupied by anyone. Any demonic force, any attempt from any witchcraft or any craft at all, Hoover craft or whatever craft they call themselves, that has ever tried to take a position in this life. May the fire of God consume them today in Jesus' name. So don't compete with anybody. Don't run with anyone. Okay? You will get there. And heaven knows how you will get there. 
And then we know we will get there. Hallelujah. Go to 7. Genesis 7. Verse 8. And then you give me 15 and 16. Genesis 7, 8. With them were all various kinds of animals. Those approved for eating, for sacrifice, and along small animals. I just wanted to repeat that for you to know that Mr. and Mrs. Tortoise was still included. In saying all this, the jaguar had already taken its place. The elephants have bulldozed their way in there. That is life. Some are bigger, some are smaller, some are thinner, some are short, some are tall. But we all have a journey towards heaven. You will get there. Don't, don't. Hi. Give me, yes, 15 and 16. Two by two they came into the boat representing every living thing that breathes. Including Mr. and Mrs. Tortoise. So if your life seems like you are crawling, uh-uh, you are not crawling. So there's no need to go and do some corner corner to get in front. Even those who cheat in exams and they get high degrees and all that, when they come out and they put them in the field to work, they fail because they cheated. Be yourself. If you don't have it, you don't have it. If you have it and it's from God, it will last. If you still to get it, you will lose it. Are you hearing me? Hmm. So, a male and female entered just as God had commanded Noah. Watch this. Then the Lord closed the door behind them. Until God is ready to close your door, no principality, no powers, no spiritual wickedness that lifts itself in the noonday or flies like the arrow will ever shut your door. You see, God was waiting. God never went to the thirties and said, hurry up, rush, run. Because he created them and knew the strength of everyone. Your strength is from God. Your strength is from above. So never copy anyone, never cheat, never be jealous. Be yourself, stay in your lane. Ankrata said, do fear him. It's got nothing to you how many cars the next door neighbor has. Maybe it's an arm robber during the night. And then you also go and do the same and you get killed. Even hell will not accept you. Amen. Oh, come on, give the Lord a shout this morning. You see, the Lord has time for all of us. So, don't say, I don't know who I'm encouraging this morning. Maybe the person is watching live. Maybe the person is listening to my audio. Don't ever say that I went to school with Martha. And she's gotten married. She's got a set of twins. I don't even have a husband. I don't even have this. I don't even have that. And then now, somebody comes to you with sweet talk. You know, sweet talk. I tell you what, you can overtake Martha. There's this man at somewhere, yes, somewhere. There's this man said, come with me. And then you go and the guy says, yes, you can have a baby. And truly you get pregnant, but that's a demon's child. You will suffer all the principalities and spiritual wickedness in your home. You never have peace because you didn't get there right. You have a child, but it's a demon child. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, and he shall see you through. Amen. Exodus 14. So remember what I'm telling you this morning. It, it, it doesn't matter who is in front of you. Hmm? If you watch uh, racing, car racing, those of you who watch it, see when they start, everybody wants to get ahead. Along the route, many of them crash off. And then they allow, because they have crashed off, the one that was behind comes and passes all of them. And he goes and takes the prize. Go at your pace that God has given you. Just ask him for strength. 
and then he will see you through. Amen. Exodus 14, which is very popular. Exodus 14, 22 to 25. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. You see, go on. Going up to 25. Then the Egyptians, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, charioteers, chased them into the middle of the sea. But just before then, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian army from the pillar of fire and cloud. And he threw their forces into total confusion. This is what is about to happen to your enemies. So, as I saw this morning, they chased us to a point that when you turn your neck, you can see your enemy close to you. But then worship came in. And then God sent them back to hell. 24, let me just go back to 24. But just before dawn, you see, God will never leave us. Sometimes as if he has forsaken us. Sometimes as if he's left us. But he's looking down on whatever is going on right now here on earth. He knows right now as you are here who is sitting be, be, before the fetish priest or whatever trying to chant your name. God will allow them to do it. Because he has time to respond. So he allowed the Egyptians, in fact he fooled them to think that they are about to catch the Israelites. See, so just before dawn, the midnight hour, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian army from pillar of fire and cloud, and he threw their forces into total confusion. 25. He twisted their chariot wheels, making their chariot difficult to drive, and then they said, let's get out of here, away from these Israelites. The Egyptians shouted, the Lord is fighting for them against it. You didn't shout. <laughs> Let your enemies come as close as they can. The moment they try to touch you, they will know that the Lord is fighting your battles. Don't be afraid of them. Never be afraid of them. Never be jealous, never backbite, never point fingers at anyone, whether they are wearing Brazilian or Egyptian wig. It's got nothing to do with you. Some of them, in fact, their heels they are wearing, maybe it's just from Kokumpe. But because they spread it bright red, you think it's from Pakistan or... It's here, made in Ghana. And then you are so jealous, you can't even sleep at night. Your heart, bang, bang, bang. Your husband says, Adria, what is wrong? Hmm. Could you what is wrong? Ah. But God says, in your own pace, He will get you there. Give the Lord a shout this morning. So, so with that, when you look at Exodus 14, 13 and 14. 13 and 14 now. I reversed it for a reason. Exodus 14. 13 to 14. I intentionally read the 25 first. Now we go back. Exodus 14, 13. Exodus 14, thank you. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you when? When? And when is today? Huh? Now you are getting it. Today is now. So you are rescued in Jesus' name. <laughs> it says, just stand still and watch the Lord rescue. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. Why won't they be seen again? Because they are dead. I pray this morning for you in the name of Jesus. Whoever, whomever, whichever, whatever, ever, wherever they came from, to disturb you to this last Thursday in November. May they disappear in the name of Jesus. Anyone troubling your family, troubling your finances, your children, your marriage, your jobs, whatever it may be, today, may the Lord make them disappear permanently. 
and may the Lord see you through to your destination. Give him a shout in Jesus' name. So the 14 says what? The 14, 14 says what? The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Just stay calm. Like the tortoise, Mr. and Mrs. Tortoise, they were whispering and worshiping God. God never got angry. He stood closely by, by the door of the ship, waited for them to enter before he closed it. Today, my message for you is, you will get there. And heaven knows how you will get there. And then we know we will get there. Oh, well, hallelujah. So, in Isaiah 43, Isaiah 43, 15 to 19. It says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator and king. You see, he started by introducing himself so that you know that he is the one speaking. Go on. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I called for the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned. Their life snuffed out. 17. Their life snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. The Lord tricked them and he's going to trick your enemies. You have fooled them for them to think that they are almost getting you. And then he will drown them. May your enemies be drowned today in the name of Jesus. I quote 18. But forget all that. Hmm? Forget everything I've even told you this morning. Until this morning. Forget everything. Whatever you've been through from January to today. Forget it all. Hmm? Forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm coming to do. You didn't receive it. Oh, come on, give him a shout to receive it. For I am about to do something. Huh? You see, this is where you make me count how many people are here. One, two. Huh? For I am about to do something what? Receive new years today in the name of Jesus. Receive it from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Whatever you came here for, let it be fresh. Let it be new. Let it be anointed. Give the Lord a shout. Take the newness. I have already begun. Do you not see? Do you not see? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. This is what you're about to receive today. Brand new. New, I mean new. You know, when people buy new cars, they said, ah, I've forgotten what they said. Uh, what? Tear, tear rubber. Hmm? You live here after this service going home smelling like tear rubber. Those who smelt you in a foul spirit, they will smell you again with the anointing of God upon you. Fear no fool. Now listen to this blessing. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 54, sorry. Isaiah 54. Verse 4. And then read 7 to 9 and you end at 17. Isaiah 54, 4. 7 to 9 and then 17. You see, we come against it again. Come across it. Fear not. You will no longer live Oh, read, read, read it with me, read it with me. Fear not. You no longer live what? Don't be what? There is what? For who? Me, me, or you. Uh-huh. If it's for me too, it's fine. You will no longer remember the shame of your youth and the sorrows of your widowhood. Huh? That's what God says there. And then 7 to 9 says what? For a brief moment, brief, I abandoned you, but with great compassion, 
I will take you back. In a burst of anger, I turned my face away for a little while. But with everlasting love, I will have compassion on you. Says the Lord, your Redeemer. What does the nine say? Just as I swore in the time of Noah. You see, we've gone all the way around back to Noah again. So that means you will get there. You will get into the boat. God will make sure you arrive safely. I will never again let a flood cover the earth. So now I swear that I will never again be angry and punish you. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me end with a 17. The same place, 17. Yes. But in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will do what? You will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I. Let me recap on that. <laughs> but in the coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every noise raised up to accuse you, which they do every day anyway. They will accuse you till you die. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken it. What did the Lord say to you? What did the Lord say to you? What did the Lord say to you? Be on your feet.
Jesus. Jesus. I see a lot of people are just waking up. They are now just gingering up. Hallelujah. Come Tell somebody, hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. Hey. Are you alive this morning? Yeah. Give the Lord a sword offering and a cup offering. Hallelujah. We are a chosen generation. Call for to show his excellence. Hey, all I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. I just want you to sing this song with a minute this morning. Generation, call for to show his excellence.
Say we are. 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are great. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Holy Spirit. It is great. I thank you, Father. The time to bless your people. The time to anoint your people. The time to strengthen them. We say thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good. Be seated. Thank you very much. Last week, I spoke about two brothers, isn't it? Was it here? Jacob and his brother Esau. If you look at the two lives and you want to judge it from the human uh, mind, Esau wasn't too bad, isn't it? It looked like even Jacob was more crooked than Esau. <laughs> isn't it? You can even understand Esau from his point that he was hungry. So what is the essence of if I'm hungry? I would rather have food. Uh, to die, why don't I eat the food and leave it? That is a very good choice he's made. I don't believe this. So with the human mind and human judgment, Esau was very good. And from the human mind and human judgment, Jacob was very bad. Your brother is hungry, giving food to eat. You are demanding his first his birthright. Uh, isn't it? Or who should be blessed, the two of them? If you are God. If you were God, which one will you bless? Who? Esau. Isn't it? Because you cannot trust Jacob. He's a trickster. 419 in every area. <laughs> but so that God's choices will not be because of what? This is what we call by grace. When you are saved by grace, it's not because you are too good. The Bible said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So the things of God received by grace, if you want to use your mind to analyze it, you may miss it. It is we who don't deserve, we get it. Anytime you get to a point you think you deserve something because of what you are doing. Be very careful. You might not have it. But when you say, I don't deserve it, and because of Jesus Christ, I'm going to take it. The miracle is, come to come, is going to come to you. That is why sometimes even good people may not be saved. Because they don't see themselves as sinners. Why would they not see themselves as sin? They compare themselves with the next neighbor. Have you ever compared yourself before? If you have a bicycle and somebody is walking and you're in the village and you have to compare who is a rich man. You'll be seen like the richest man 
in the village, but move a little further into the district capital, you'll find out that you're one of the poorest. <laughs> you don't meet the mark. <laughs> so we all don't meet the mark, but by grace, we are all saved. And I want us not to take the grace of God for granted. Let us always depend upon his grace. No matter how good we have to try to be the best, but remember still that your best cannot measure up to uh, uh, God's standard, but God has put his own righteousness on you. So when God is looking at you, he's not looking at you as this man. He looked at you through Christ Jesus. So when you come and you are praying, he does not see you. He sees Christ, Jesus, because you intercede through him. And the message that goes to the Father is the Son pleading on your behalf. So that's why we do everything in Christ. That's why we pray in Christ as Christian. We do our warfare in Christ. Whatever you do, you do it in Christ. So when Satan, you're facing Satan, it is not you per se. So he cannot tell you, at a bank yesterday, or you took Nkatekwan, or any other thing, so you can catch me out. No, 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 no. It is when you say in the name of Jesus. It's like Jesus telling him, now, Satan, move, get out. That's why you shouldn't be afraid. Say amen. amen. So yesterday I spoke about being that last two last week that his father gave the blessing to Jacob and he cried for it. The father said, I've given all. He pressed on. When he pressed on, the father spoke certain things. At least he released some blessings including the fat of what? The earth. Including the black gold. <laughs> the oil of the earth. <laughs> so God knew ahead of time that there will be the earth will have fat. <laughs> Before we could discover there is fat in the, in the soil, God had discovered it years, 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 even before Jesus was born. So, if somebody had read it in those days, they said, ah, how can this F, how can oil be in the F? It won't make sense. That's why the scripture doesn't make sense until it has been discovered. The scripture is not trying to say what science is saying. Science is trying to discover what the scripture has said. So if they haven't discovered it yet, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. They are yet to discover it that what the Bible says is true. I hope you're getting me. So if there's a disease which haven't been healed before, and scientifically they haven't got this, an answer to it, and the Bible says there's an answer to it, it's just that they haven't discovered it. One day, somebody will stumble upon it and say, ah, this thing, so it works. They may call it a myth, they may give it any other name, but at the end, the Bible still stand. But God says something. He said, you will be what? He said, all that I have said, that you'll be a servant of your brother and whatever it is, by the sword you shall live and you shall serve your brother. This is a blessing. He said, just say, Oma, 
sword and so. If you don't fight, you won't chop. <laughs> by your sword, you shall live. Even though by the sword you shall live, you shall still be the servant of your brother. And it shall come to pass. You see, after he said this, he said, it shall come to pass. I like the gun. I like the gun one. Good. Whatever, no matter what God has said, it shall come to pass. What shall come to pass? When you become what? Restless. You, should, you will not be in this condition forever if you don't want to be. You, can nev- you will never be a slave forever if you don't want to be. Yes, you could look like slaves begging, f- getting to other nations begging, but it should not remain there forever. It shall surely come to pass. But what will happen unless the people become restless? You cannot become restless when you are comfortable. When you have a baby, the way to know that the ba- there's something wrong with the baby is when it is restless. Sometimes when they soil themselves, they become restless. Then they are not comfortable. So you have to change them. But if they soil themselves and they lie down, and you may not know. So when you become restless, except Africa become restless of their condition, except Ghana become restless, don't keep on blaming anybody. It's a long time. Don't put your blame on somebody who came here and uh, and, 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 and took your fathers away. Yes, it has, yeah, it has happened. But what are you doing now? Yes, you can be a slave for a season, but don't see yourself as a slave. He said, when you become restless, I want people to become restless in the condition they are in. If you're failing, don't just say, oh, Onyamin Aye. Who told Onyamin Aye? When you come, you see, Christian, when you come and you're even praying, so they look at people the way they pray. I know they, are not, they don't need anything. Hey, it's your life is at stake. You pray restless prayer. You don't care about who is standing by your left side, your right side, because you want to take your breakthrough. If you say, oh, Pastor, some people they see me, Pastor, say I didn't have anybody to help me. I said, This world, nobody will help you if you don't help yourself. But everybody, by nature, everybody is want to help himself. Yes. Oh, my, someone said, my, my, my parent, they, died, they didn't take me to school. I said, did they put a limitation to a year that you shouldn't learn? Is there in a, age a limit that you can't learn A, B, C, D? Is there any law that forbid anybody? Say, go and find something. I know somebody. He's not even a pastor. He never went to school. He said, he said Pastor, if I had got the chance to go to school, like what I would do? I said, oh, there are chances all over. <laughs> he said, I mean, I said, look, you don't need to go to classroom. You need to buy, if we're buying kinky, 
eat half kinky. Put the men down, buy a book. He started gradually. And he went to, they used to have what we call workers' college. It used to be in, a, uh, I think, in the 70s. He started this workers' college. He started gradually, then he managed to do the O level, went to university, did his master's, did his PhD. Look, why he should have said that there was PhD in him. And sitting down to blame his parents who are dead and gone. Meanwhile, he has got good brains. I know some of you. You rose up and got degrees. You didn't have a chance to go to secondary university, but you've done a degree. Some have got their masters. Majority of you here, I know. You became restless. Your offices were just telling you are very hardworking just because you don't have paper. You go and bring some small boy from university that you teach him, make him your boss. Then you became angry. That is restlessness. <laughs> you became restless, angry. Say, ah! You know all this. But because they said, yeah, this, she started <clears throat> and move out. Isn't it, Master? You went to Central University. You went to Central University. Yeah. He was old before he went there. Isn't it? He was in the police. They were putting him, Sergeant, uh, oh, if not the corporal. And he was going to grow up only to, uh, what's that, ins inspector? Nga ubedu, ubekwa. Be the same as Jumana, Bequa, Albert Baco, and all inspector, and then no word Dutch. He decided to move. He became restless. I visited at Tema at that time. He became restless. He said, Central Investor, my man could be Koye, did degree to that descent, and he became a commander. You see, what commander? I think at Volta region area there, was it? District commander, isn't it? Yeah. At Chebi. What I'm telling you, you cannot just sit down. I know most of you here, you, you are a lecturer now. He was also prisons. Sergeant, isn't it? Sergeant. And he was going to retire. Junior of a junior descent. Until you become restless. Don't sit down and say, Become restless. Don't be content. Move towards the IGP. Take a book, read. If you make me say, let them laugh, still do it. Don't care about people. Care about your life. Be restless. This is what I want to be. I want to do this business. This way I'll be. You fulfill. Get up again. Do it. If you meet somebody from America, tell him, look, this is my dreams. Speak. You know, Americans, they speak big things. They don't have anything, but they speak big. You to learn how to speak big. I like them. Very confident. But it's all kasa unitin. And so say no be kasa no one shall be bubu to from. I hope I'm saying something. In the Bible. This is what happened. But the anointing makes you 
discover that this position I am, I don't like it. It brings strength to become restless to move forward in life. That is one of the reasons why God anointed people. The church was cowed by the Sahindri and by the, listen, when Jesus died, they tried to persecute them and the moment, the way they saw them treat Jesus, Peter, all the rest went underground. Jesus said, go up there and wait for me, the upper room, because you don't have to be comfortable with that. They were there praying, praying, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they became restless. They couldn't stay there. Peter couldn't hold him. He couldn't keep the message in the upper room. He went out and preached the gospel and about 3,000 people got saved. They also arrested James. And got off his head. Arrested. And it pleased the people that James' head was cut. They arrested uh, Peter too. The church became restless. First they were content. They said, oh, nyame baya, we say trinity. The second one, they said, hey, if we sit down, they were cut. So they became restless. And the restlessness caused them to pray. And they prayed until Peter was released. It's not only Peter. Dorcas, very good woman, helping people. You think people haven't died? People have died, they buried them. Ananias and Sapphira, they died, but they buried them. Others died there also. Oh, after a human being dies. But when Dorcas died, at Job, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of what? Good works and charitable deeds, which she did. There are certain things that can make people restless about you when you live. So when you, when you die, people say, praise God. What me? But you create too much trouble that people want you to live quick. But <laughs> the people couldn't because if they allow this woman to go, what would the poor eat? If this, my shoe get this, in, this woman is the one who helps me. So that alone made the people restless. They said, we will not permit. They went to Peter. Look at what they told Peter. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. She was good. But she was sick and died. She became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in the upper room. How many of you remember upper room? That's where the Holy Spirit came. <laughs> and since Lydia was near Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent two men to him, imploring him to not to delay in coming to them. He said, Peter. Peter didn't know what was happening. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he had come, they brought him to the upper room. And all the widows, did you hear? All the what? Ah, if widows come and stand here and they are crying. If you're a pastor, not one widow, all the widows, the husband is there, died, Somebody is taking responsibility. In those days, women did not have properties and were not as rich as we are. Now, the properties, most of the time, depend on what the, uh, uh, the husband would do, just like the olden days. Uh, that's why most of the time, our women used to be called housewives. That time, they don't go to offices. The man go to the farm, do, do the farming, kill the animal, bring it 
for you to cook. So you sit down and take care of the children. Or the men go to the offices, go and work, and they call something chop money. He takes chop money every morning and give it to the woman, and the woman cook and leave some of them for the man to come and eat. But now, season have changed. <laughs> but still, we men still, the men, we still want the women to play the same role. You are there helping us to do our role. I said, so for Obe say, man, am I? Hey, today, first I'm watching me. <laughs> now, when you get up in the morning, they also get up in the morning. You go through a the traffic, they go through the traffic. You meet the same pressure with your boss, and they also meet the same pressure with their bosses. They leave the same time. And sometimes you even leave before them. And they come back home. You expect them to make food ready. Are they magicians? You are angry with me. I won't let my wife go to this place again. The, the pastor is spoiling them. I'm saying that so that we can have, if they say, I am tired, we can understand them. When you come and the food is not ready, don't be angry with her. Be angry with yourself that you didn't cook. by the way. <laughs> Widows became very agitated. Because their livelihood had been taken away. The one who was providing what their husband, if their husband was alive, was providing is also gone. So they came to Peter. Peter, either you provide the need every day or you raise this woman. Two things. And you understand and you know Peter, when he went down and they met the cripple, you know what he said? He said, silver and gold have I none. <laughs> so you cannot expect the silver and gold <laughs> <laughs> so he knows that his silver and gold cannot take care of all these uh, <laughs> these widows so he must do something they were restless and turning to the body they went to Jesus uh, Peter but Peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed and turning to the body, he said, he knelt down and did what? And prayed. He sought the mind of God. He received information from the spiritual realm. You don't just go to the dead and say, I will raise the dead. Hey, obey the degrees. You must be sure whether the dead will rise first before you tell it. Rise up. <laughs> So he knelt down, prayed. I said, God, you know, when people die, <laughs> they're gone. It takes a miracle. So while he knelt down, he spoke to God, and there was faith in his heart. Maybe he didn't tell us what he had, but God gave him the assurance that just speak to the body, and the body will get up. And he arose and went to the body and said, Tabitha. Oh, what did he say? Turn the body. Tabitha. 
arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. Restlessness of these widows created a miracle for Tabitha. It brings the anointing and the anointing will never let you be at the same place. Remember when Jesus fasted for 40 days after he fasted, the Bible said he was led by the spirit. He was anointed by the spirit. He came out from the wilderness with the anointing of the spirit upon him. Then he then took the book of Isaiah and said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news. This I can't be, I can't be satisfied. No, Jesus was people were telling me he went to India, went to the place. At a certain time, we're not hearing anything about Jesus. The only time you heard he was born, uh, the wise man and the, uh, 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 and the shepherd uh, uh, went and visited him. And, and, and then uh, Herod wanted to kill the mother. The father took him to uh, run away to uh, uh, Egypt. They went to Egypt more and they stayed there. They learned a little gun. And he, he, uh, they learned a little gun. Then later they came back. And when they came back, the only time we heard about him when he was around 12 years, uh, when they came and they were moving, and the father could not see him. They were looking for him. They went and found him in the house of the Lord. And I said, hey, don't you know that I'm in the, uh, in my heart. The father's house didn't. Uh, uh, he just told the father, mother, father, mother something, which these days when you tell them, uh, uh, in those days when you, you tell your father, they will beat you. Uh, uh, just, he spoke like a modern day uh, uh, child. Uh, Jesus have moved into our generation, this generation, and spoke the same way. <laughs> He's the same yesterday, the same today. So today too, he was like that. So he said, hey, and he's the same tomorrow. So he moved to tomorrow and, and answered the question like tomorrow's uh, uh, children. Huh? Restlessness. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The anointing of the Lord is upon me. When God's anointing is upon you, whatever you see, when the devil is destroying something, you can't feel satisfied. You will not be, you become restless about things that are evil. Amen. Holy Spirit filled people shouldn't be comfortable with evil. They should become restless. When you see, you f- don't feel fine. He, he, when you see the sick, he said, this is the work of the devil. I cannot. When you see the blind, when you see people getting to hell, he's restless. He, he want to rescue many. Are you born again? Do you have the spirit of God in you? Do you have the spirit of God upon you? You remember Saul? King Saul. When he was anointed by who? Samuel. He went back to his hometown. His village. Found, my uncle asked him, he tried to dodge the uncle with the question. Uh, this. Then he was coming from farm. From the farm. And he heard wailing and crying. He wasn't, nobody knew him even as a king. When everybody heard the message, they were crying. But when he heard the message, that some people, and then the Nahas, the Ammonite, came up and then come against Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of, oh, let me, let me finish. And all the men of who? Jabesh said to Nahash, Nahash, make a covenant with us and we will save you. Sometimes you are there. Because somebody is strong, he come against you. And the way, if you know you can be somebody, you must. He said, let me be your servant. Even that one, they don't want to agree. If somebody means just to fight you, 
no matter what deal you give to you won't take it. He said, please, we want to, you to make us your servant. We will serve you. Let's just sign agreement. You don't attack us. We will be your servant. We will fetch water for you. We will go and bring fire wood. We will go and do this. We will wash your children. Please. When you finish, it will come and wash your plate. He said, no. I want to disgrace you people. Look at what they said. And Nahash, the Ammonite, answered them, on this condition, I will make a covenant with you. He gave a condition. That I may put out all, all your right eyes and bring reproach on all Israel. Look at the demand he's given. On this condition that I will sign a covenant with you, I will put up what? Where? Your right eye, the, your, your revelation, the right place, the one that, the right place that you must move on, I will block your path to success. The enemy is bad. Then look at what they said. Then the elders of Jabesh said to him, Hold off for seven days. Please give us seven days. That we may send messengers to all the territory of Israel. And then, if there is no one to save us, we will come out to you. What a sad news. So they sent messages to Israel all over. So the messengers came to Gibeah of Saul and told the news in the hearing of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and did what? Ah! No savior. They're looking for the savior. They were weeping for them that they're going to lose their, wife, their eyes. So let's continue. Now there was Saul coming behind the head from the field. And Saul said, what troubles the people that they weep? Because he heard the weeping. And they told him the words of the men of Jabesh. Then the spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard this news. And when he heard this news, and his anger was greatly aroused, he became restless. The others heard, they became demoralized. Paul heard, became restless, and his anger came out. He said, what? This ought not to happen to us. We are not going to sit down for our brother's eyes to be removed. Even though it's not my eyes, but we are not going to sit down. If we sit down and they remove our brother's eyes, the next eye they will remove is ours. So he took a yoke of oxen and cut them in pieces. In pieces. And send them throughout all the territory of Israel by the hands of the messengers. Saying, whoever does not go out with Saul and Samuel to battle, so it shall be done to this oxen. To his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people. And they came out with one consent. One man got restless. And the rest were arrested by the fear of the Lord. When he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were 300,000. Wow. And the men of Judah, 30,000. Wow. And they set the messengers who came shall you see to the men what of Jabesh Gilead tomorrow by the time
time of the sun is hot. Which time is that? By what time? When, when is the sun hot? Tomorrow by noon. He said, yeah, man, dear example. This is, let's look at what he said. This is, ah, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Tomorrow by the time the sun is hot, you shall have help. Then the messengers came and reported it to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. Therefore, the men of Jabesh said, Tomorrow we will come out to you, and you may do with us whatever seems good to you. They know where their strength is. When you support the least foundation, so it was on the next day. What happened? Is it so? The thing has covered it so. Huh? But Saul put what? That Saul put the people in what? In three companies. And they came into the midst of the camp in the morning march. Watch. And kill Ammonite until what? The heat of the day. What did he say? He said tomorrow by the time of the heat of the day when the sun is hot you shall bring help. And he killed them unto when that time. So it was prophetic word he spoke prophetic word, and the prophetic word had been fulfilled. Let's look at the word that was fulfilled. And they came in the midst of the camp in the morning watch and killed the Amorite until the heat of the day. And it happened that those who survived were scattered so that no two of them were left together. So you can cover your brother. Then the people said to Samuel, who is he who said, shall so reign over us? Bring the men that we may put them to death. First, there was uh, people were not sure whether Saul can become a king. So they said, ah, this Saul, son of Kish, wants so you are the least among your family. O papa onishi, o mami onishi. O ojike jiko endo echibia. Saul, who is Saul? He is. He come from the family of what? The Benjamin, isn't it? The last born. How can the last born rule over we? Ah. You are not even close to the throne. So some people will vow that nobody, some people shouldn't be their president now. Some people will be their president now. Never say that. But God will also prove himself if he is the one who has chosen you. There shall be a proof. If God really chose you, you don't have to convince people that you are called by God. God himself will prove by a certain word, by what you have done, by your works. They saw the works of Saul, they forgot that he was the last born, uh, the, the least of the family. Those who thought they were the best, they have the best knowledge, they can, they can rule better than him, they all forgot. Because this is the man that brought salvation. And a king should bring salvation to his people. Every king 
that do not bring salvation to his people. Anytime you want to rule people, your purpose is to bring salvation, to save them from certain things. Save them from poverty. Save them, listen, that is the purpose of a king. The purpose of a king is not to just uh, uh, rule over people and just boss over them and do this, but it's to save them. It's to bring salvation. So whenever you want to be in every pos any position, know that you are being sent there to lead so that you can bring salvation to the business or whatever it is said. Yeah. And they saw that in Paul. If you are a husband, oh, to them one husbands, and you say, I am the head, you should be able to save your family. When there are critical things, you should be the one that will stand in and bring salvation to the family. Salvation from tough poverty, salvation from starvation, salvation from, from moral degradation. If anyone is aspiring to any political position, know that it's not a position to be called only honorable, but you are going there to bring salvation. If you have no this mind, you have no business getting into politics, getting into ruling God's people, ruling mankind. Are you angry with me? Even if you are angry, I'm making myself happy. I know how to. He said, brother, just make yourself happy. Be yourself. I'm, I, I don't like people. Oh, I don't like looking at people. Mm, oh, I've said this. Makan. Makan, makan. The reason why Jesus also came was you call him king of kings so that he would give, bring salvation. Wherever he went, he brought salvation. Either salvation from sicknesses, diseases, people who are sick, he went there to save them from that sicknesses. Those who are under sin and the power of sin, he delivered them. Those who were blind, he brought salvation and they could now see. That's how we call him King of Kings. Ahine He's a king of all kings. Senior prophet. Master of our presidents. Whether your country is poor or rich, he is still a president over all. This F, he has the power to turn it and to stop it within a second. We are just managing it, but he controls it. The oil, when it comes upon your head, you don't become complacent. He was so restless. Today, his spirit, when it comes upon you, you become restless. And when you're restless, you're able to move, to possess. That's why the Bible calls conviction. When you hear the word of God, you were convicted of your sin. You became restless. Then you sought for help. He said, who then can help me? That's why you went to Jesus. And Jesus forgave you. Anytime God's spirit comes, he brings restlessness. And when you become restless, you are able to find. You are able to break through and break the yoke in your life. The people can never break through until they become restless. If you are living in debt, So that you become used to the debt. 
until you go out and see certain things and say, wow, why should I live here? The moment the people begin to become restless, death cannot stay there again. I have stayed around some area before. And it was close to formerly they should have this uh, public place of convenience. It used to be public. It's usually called public. Public. And everything, the air there is is being affected, perfume, by the area. When you live around, the moment you enter, you first, you have the sense. But when you stay there for some time, the things settle. And you don't... <laughs> your, 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 how do you call it? The smell becomes stabilized in you. So you don't even think there's something uh, there. The air becomes normal. The only time you will get to know is when you go out and you are coming again. You then feel a change. Until you become restless, you're going to remain there. But when you are restless, that's where you want to move to the next level. You can be in a single room and single room. I remember some man was, he was a lecturer living in a family house. You know, so fighting over one bedroom, which the father have left for he and his six brothers also. The guy wanted to take the thing to court. I said, ah, what, what is wrong with you? The money you're going to use for court? Can't it buy a land in East Legon? At that time, East Legon land was very cheap. In the seventies and eighties, it was bush. You pass through bush, ah, the bungalow. You pass a bungalow, then leg on a uh, listen. Then you pass ah, to a uh, presec. Every place bush. From presec to Medina, bush. I said, God, this is, oh, this one. He said, they said, they are snakes. I said, hey, what are they going to have? Snakes in the middle of my They can't cross the road. Go and get some portion there. I think he just bought it. The, the land was, they said, oh, pastor, the place is too far. I said, hey, there's no place far. Eventually, I said, when you get you can buy one. When they pay you, buy one cement. They said, he said, a small, small. I said, if you do two bedroom, it's better than you are. One bedroom, you're living with your family. Around, so that small, they said, near nearby, it's a do small, they said, and you are fighting with your brothers and sisters. Ha! I said, use the court. The one you use for the lawyer. Use it. Anytime you want to go, you make as if you're going to court. So, let them say every two weeks you go to court and you are paying the lawyer. Take the money. If that week when it comes, take the money and go and buy this. Eventually, he built a nice, he got some student to help design a good, this is on fair program. And kakra, 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 he built a nice house. Which he can rent out for more than $3,000 or $5,000 a month. That's as a son. Until you become restless, you'll be fighting small, small with small, small boys. Oh, are you I agitated, he became restless. Look at the man's face. I said, I'll advise you. 
advice. It's like an insult. But the insult uh, ginger something in him. Me, I don't insult direct. I say it nicely. <laughs> but when you go home, <laughs> when, you, when you go home, you think about it, you hey, okay, <laughs> so, okay, say we we'll do. <laughs> Some of you, you've wasted man hours chasing the air, the wind. Hating people for nothing. Wasting your resources on things you didn't waste on. Be restless. When the Holy Spirit comes, there's a restlessness in your life. You are not content with your Christian life. If you are falling today, you get up, you fall, you get, be restless. Somebody say, oh, pastor, this boyfriend, I can't leave him. Oh. Who told you you can't leave him? When you are restless, you will leave. You tell him, eternity is at hand. There is future. What shall it profit a man? If I gain the most beautiful husband or wife or richest man and I die and loses my soul, this alone should make you restless. What shall it profit me if I enjoy Sex for five minutes and go to hell. What's your name? My canoe. Why shall it profit you? Why do you? You're quiet. To move from woman to woman as if you're a butterfly. Are you a bee? Looking for this thing for nectar to go and make honey? Why shall it profit you if you do all this? And loses. I'm even talking about having AIDS or any other disease. Those ones. Uh, yeah. ah. I'm talking about eternity. Some people may not tell this truth. Oh. I'm telling the truth. One day you understand me. Be restless over sin. I know sometimes this body, this flesh, some say, hello, very troublesome. Is it right? Hello. Hi. Is San Diego? I'm speaking guy. This flesh, killing it is not easy. I understand that the flesh have a desire and the desire of the flesh is very strong. But until we become restless, the flesh will always dominate us. Today, yes, I for near some of the kind. 
And then I I want you to live a happy life. I want you when you are asleep, you, you sleep well. I want you that when you hear anything, you're not afraid even of death. When he says, I'm cool, my then. If you kill me, I say it's transfer. Ah. I'm living in a village, a house that is leaking. You say you come and take me to Accra, Tasako. Give me a house there. Have you done me evil? If you like come and break it down, I'll move to Tasako. Heaven is better than Trasaku. So fear not of anyone who will try to destroy this body. Because there's a temple that is built without hands, the hand of a man. This body can be killed, but your soul, no one can kill it. I hope you are getting me. Some of us have never given our life to Jesus. Today I want you to lift up your hand. Don't fear shy. And say, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I am restless in this kind of life I'm living. I now want to live for Christ. Stand up quickly, those people. Don't feel shy of anybody. I know you're struggling. It's not one person. I know there are many people struggling here. You are shy. Sit down. Sit down with your shyness. Madam, thank you very much. It's not only one woman. There are most of us here. If we die today, we are afraid. You are not sure. You know you won't go to heaven. Rise up. Thank you. Bless you, gentlemen. Thank you, sister. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. You're the one I want to pray for you today. There are others I know. You are struggling there. Rise up. Thank you, gentlemen. People are struggling inside. Satan say, sit down. Is the devil speaking to you? Become restless. Shake him off and stand up. Don't allow him to dominate you. I'm talking about eternity. I'm talking about the future. I'm talking about your life after this earth. I'm talking about real life. I'm talking about Jesus. I want to pray for those people. I want to come forward here. I want to pray for you. Does that come? You are my heart cry, my clap for them, my heart desire, and you are the one I'm going to pray for. Pray, clap for them, clap for them. I know there are many, if you are still, if you are set loose, rise up and come. If you are set loose, rise up and come. Don't mind anybody. Nobody, you see, when you die, all the people around you, what they'll do, they'll just cry for Few minutes, the men will dump you. They say, Minubeko, some will say, you know, they have a Jamie Nubeko, Midubeko, Midubeko, and okay, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, when they, Minubeko, Minubeko, when they get to the grave there, they change the song, they, they cry, oh, the major wine. He cried from the house, I'll go with you, I'll go with you. When he gets to where, if you like jump inside, he said, Who did you leave me? After they think they get home, they're finished. They'll do party. 
They call it Bunyopati. This is a chance for you. Don't lose this chance. This is the hour, the appointed time for you. This is the time. Rise up. Join them. This is your time. Don't waste time. Time is not on your side. You don't know what will happen even after this place. Rise up and join them. Death is knocking at the door of many. It is Jesus who can keep you. Thank you. I still sense that some people are still struggling. Sitting down. Rise up quickly. My heart is burning within me. That people need to be saved. People need to give their life. People need to surrender their life to Jesus. Rise up quickly. Rise up quickly. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. This is the hour of salvation. This is the hour of salvation. Rise up. Rise up. Your life after this, I will also pray for you. Salvation goes with deliverance from sin and other things. And also goes with life, overcoming life on this earth. Rise up. Join them. Rise up. Join them. Rise up. Join them. Rise up. Don't feel shy of anybody. Rise up. Join them. Rise up. Join them. I sense the Holy Spirit is doing a deep work in people. And from today, your life shall never be the same. As you come forward here, as Jesus becomes king over your life, your right eye can will never be removed. Some of you, the devil, want to take away your right eye because of sin. Today, Jesus wants to fight that tomorrow at noon by this time, yes, help shall come to these people who are standing here. Tomorrow by that time, help shall come to these people there. Oh, my God. This are the reason why I came here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The spirit of salvation is all over. Anyone who is, wi who is willing, let him come and receive. Spirit of salvation is just all over here. Anybody who is willing, rise up and join them. Rise up and join them. Rise up and join them. Wow. These are great people more than conquerors. Women and men of victory. Women and men that will have power over the flesh, over sin, and over the devil. Women of men that Christ will rule through them. Women and men whose life shall never be the same. Women and men who will face the devil and not be afraid of the devil. Because they will say, he has nothing in me. Now, Christ wants to come and live in you. Rule over your life. Take control over your life. It doesn't matter. I'm not saying if you go to church, you can go to church and not have Jesus in you. You can go to church and go to hell. You can go to church and not have power over your body. When there is a stirring like this, I want you to release your life. I want you to accept. You are just there. I feel some few people are still sitting down there. Should I get up? People will laugh at me. Hey! When we die, we go alone. Nobody follows you. They do your service alone. Don't look at somebody. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. But after death, judgment. If you die, 
If you are born once, you will die two times. If you are born twice, you will die once, which is the body. The body will separate from this. That is the only death will die. And what I am doing to you, what I'm going to give to you, is a new life that will come into you. A new life to overcome the enemy. A new life to overcome this life. A new life to be able to stand against the devil and win the battle. Look into his face and say, Satan, you have nothing in me. A new life to be able to cast out demons. You have suffered for long. You start this sin, the devil come and scatter it. Trying to succeed. Success eluding you. What you need is Christ first. It's a prophet. Are they preaching? I think this is my best preaching to me. But one day, when I see this ones, who the enemy want to remove their eyes perpetually, and I see them with their two eyes walking in this life, influencing people's life, touching things, and making their life, finding vision, finding meaning in their life, my heart will rejoice. Their life will never be the same. It doesn't matter. Somebody might say, oh, I am too sinful. You are the one Jesus wants. Jesus wants the most sinful people. That's why the blood can work well. <laughs> this afternoon, I want to pray with you. After that, I'm going to pray a personal prayer for you. I want you to open your life. That you're starting a new life with God, with Christ. You're asking him to forgive you your past sins. To forgive you the sin. Secondly, you're asking him to come into your heart. And be your Lord. Lord means your ruler, your master, and your personal savior. Which simply means a king over your life. Because I said kings save, they bring salvation and to, 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 his, to his people. So we're going to pray. Jesus died for you. You don't need to die too twice. He poured his blood for you. The devil has no right over you, your life again. I want to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself. Lord, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me all my sins. Forgive me all my sins. Oh, Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart that you died for me the third day you rose up again so that I would live. I'm not speaking to a living Christ. Come into my heart and now live in my heart in Jesus' name. Help me to live the Christian life. Strengthen me to be an overcomer. Once you are in me, greater is he that has come into me than the one that is in the world. So I am a well conqueror. I'm a well overcomer. There's nothing that comes against my life that I cannot overcome it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Look at me. You're very precious in the eyes of God. Jesus from today is like you've never seen. 
He's taken your sin. He's given you his righteousness. He's come to live in you. And whatever Jesus can overcome, he's placing that thing within you to overcome. Now, there's going to be meaning in your life. Death has no control over you. You have control over death. And not only that, if you have businesses, Jesus then have a part in the business. I believe that things will begin to change. If you have no vision in life, it can be, if you are sick, healing will come. I'm going to pray for you. I want you to ask anything after becoming a child of God. After receiving him, after accepting him, after dedicating your life to him, you're going to tell him. I'm going to pray for you. Whatever your need are, just ask. This is a bonus. Three things you want God to do for you. You standing here. Just ask three things. Say, Lord, you've heard their request. Some even don't know what to ask. Some ask for one, some ask two, some have more than three. But Lord, you know the heart cry of these ones. I pray for their lives. The Lord, they will know you and the power of your resurrection. That they will walk with you. That they will win battles. Lord, take them, use them to destroy the works of the devil. Lord, heal those who are sick. Lord, establish those. Lord, bring eternity in their heart. Once you are in their heart, eternity is now in their heart. Lord, I am not afraid of any day they will die. Lord, what I know that they belong to you. If they live, they live for you. If they die, they die for you. If they walk, they walk for you. Whatever they do on this, if they do it for you. Lord, let your hand rest upon you. Show yourself strong on behalf of this one. Then the world will know that you have chosen them for this purpose. In the name of Jesus. I then anoint them to become restless in the condition in which they are in. That they will shake the failures out. Some of them have tried many things and they have failed. Today I pray that Lord, they will shake it out in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I pray for divine and total touch over the life of your servant and your handmaid. Lord, touch them. Shake those situation out. Shake it. Shake it. Lord, Bring restlessness against evil. And Lord, let satisfaction come when good things happen. I pray to take their life. Hear their cry. A miracle happened to your life. Anyone that is sick, whatever questions or whatever things you ask, receive by the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will cause it to happen to your life. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. This is the time, this is the season, this is the time, this is the season. The Lord will never forget you. He will remember you. One of you, you have been having some guilt in you. God says that today, once you accept me, there's no longer guilt again. You are a brand new person. You are a 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 new person. The devil cannot put that charge upon you again. Yes, you are discharged and acquitted from that situation. In the name of Jesus, that charge can no longer be put against your life. Today is your day. The season is your season. This charge is no longer your charge again. God has set you free. And he that the son set free shall be free indeed. Amen.
Look at me. My greatest joy in this life is today for your life. God, champions have been released today. You don't hear what I said? I said what? What did I say? Who are the champions? Great! It is what you've done today is like when Saul was anointed. When you receive Jesus in you, you become a superman, a superwoman. Because there's a super Jesus in you. And when super Jesus is in you, wherever you go, victory comes on your way. Don't be afraid. No power, no enchantment, no witchcraft, no death, no sickness, no disease can take your life because you now belong to Jesus. You are the property of God now. I say your word. Good, you heard it. Again. So it is written on you. God's property. You know, sometimes you buy a land and you put property. This in. He said, trans, uh, how do you call them? Trespasses will be prosecuted. So, anybody who tries to trespass into this life will be prosecuted. God has come to leave you. Wherever you go, remember that God is in you. When you sleep, don't be afraid you will die and you won't get up the next morning. God is in you. The devil has no power over your life. From today, victory has come. Divine victory has come. God bless you. Wow. Look. I think about about how many people? If not 70, you may be over 70. Today. You may be over 70 or about. Or close to. But the Bible says, even if one so repent. There is a party in heaven. Today, because of you, God is having a party right now. If your eyes could be open for you to see heaven, what is happening? There is rejoicing, a party, and there are angels dancing because of you. Rejoicing and throwing themselves and praising God. Today, we're going to join heaven together and praise God on your behalf. You may be seated. Thank you. Let's join heaven together. Let's join the heavenly host and sing together with them. Let heaven come down. Praises that will bring heaven down. What is happening up there? I can see the angels. I can imagine the angels dancing and rolling and singing and rejoicing and jumping up and down. I can imagine it. And when angels and heaven is happy, how can the devil have power here? That's where God then threw lavishly his gift on people. That's when you are praising him. You know when kings are happy, they give gifts. So, let your spirit join with heaven. It means, mm, your healing is in it. 
I don't need to pray for you for that situation. I show you link that will be done on earth here as it is in heaven. Now, this is the will of heaven now. And that is what we must do now. Go.
song again. Some of you, your life will be like a dream. You will sit and say, hey, is it real or a dream? It is real. God is going to intervene. Listen to what I'm going to We're going to take this song again. And we're going to take an offering. While I do the anointing, that will be the offering we'll take. But this in a new way. I should drop the offering. You come for this. In. Instead of sitting down to take it today. At the end, I'm bringing it in the middle. Put it. And, and let them come. I have to anoint everybody. Restless people. I feel. I feel.
something great has happened. Chains were broken. Deliverance. I saw deliverance. People being set free. The scripture says in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 13, and the same Proverbs 17, it's talking about, he said, a merry heart makes what? Cheerful countenance. I can see it. But what? But what? By sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. It simply means that when your heart is merry, broken heart cannot come. The devil cannot break your heart. He cannot break your spirit. He cannot break anything. I've seen spirited men and women arising. Nothing could stop them with joy and happiness and merry in their heart. Because they've joined their heart to the heavenly joy. And because the miracles are happening. And 1722, I love the 1722. That says, oh, I love it. Wow. He said, a merry heart or a happy heart, a, a happy heart or a merry heart, that's good. What we did is good. It is like medicine to you. What you did is like medicine. A merry heart, it does good. And it's like what? But the broken spirit dries the bones. It gives, how do we call it? Something some porosis. Porosis. What? Or so something, something, something porosis. It dries the bone, it breaks the bone. But it may have reversed it. You don't know what this have done. Somebody may think it's just people who just want to be happy. No, it's medicine. God is injecting his medicine in your life. As you were dancing and jumping around as if God was injecting his medicine, healing sicknesses and diseases in your life. We're closing now. Do we continue next week? Oh. Hallelujah. How many of you enjoyed today's meeting? We have been taken to the heavenly places. And that is where you have remained. But what you did is what you saw heaven doing. Because they said, when one soul repent, heaven and God himself and his angels, they rejoice. And what we did is that we just joined our faith to them and we responded that thy will be done on earth here as it is in heaven. In fact, right at that time, what is happening in the world, in the heavenly world, is that what we're doing here. We are doing the right thing. We did the right thing at the right time. We created the atmosphere for God to inject his medicine in our life. If there's anybody who has been sick here, the Bible says that the merry heart, it does its work like medicine. God has injected medicine. If anybody has got a dry bone, uh, the name my wife mentioned, uh, uh, osteoporosis. Osteoporosis. Yeah, Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, I am not shy. Because sometimes you ask some white man to mention a gun word he can't mention. It doesn't mean that he's also stupid. He said, no, 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 to me more. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sometimes some mouths, some lips cannot mention some things. And what, how, if you train it anyhow, it won't be able to mention it. So in every tribe, it doesn't mean that you are uneducated. It means that you are just not, it's not your language. Yeah. 
So I'll go and practice it. Next time I mention it properly. Amen. God bless you. Look at somebody and just tell the person what happened to you. I believe that miracles happen. If it's like medicine, if what we did is like medicine, if we take medicine, what happens? You get healed. So you cannot do this and healing will not happen. Sometimes we have one mind, one way that which won't go to work. But God has different ways. And this is one of the most effective way. A most powerful medicine that God can give. God bless you. Let me release blessing on this. Take advantage, oh God. I pray today for financial breakthrough. Healing in the financial world. The finances of this people will be healed. Everyone that gave any offering right from the heart heal the finances bless the finances open their eyes grant them divine victory in life lord inject healing not only in their finances but what money is not able to do lord not only in what money is not able to do but Lord, to their children. Yeah. Not only their children, but their children, children. Yeah. And children, children, children. Yeah. Let this be transgenerational blessing. Yeah. And the blessing of the Lord makes a man rich. And let this be their portion today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Shall we share the grace? The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Today, I won't see anybody. I have another program at 6 p.m. I just heard I had a program. Uh, so please uh, forgive. Uh, just Take your injection, take your medicine, and go home with it. <laughs> <laughs>